Now we've talked about acids, it's time to talk about bases, a strong versus weak. Where do we find our strong hydroxides? They are hydroxides of groups one and two. If you think back to your list of what the strong bases are, you find that lithium, sodium, and potassium are all in group one. Calcium, barium, and strontium are all in group two on your periodic table. The thing you have to recall though is if group one dissociates, you're only gonna get one mole of hydroxide because hydroxide ion is a minus one and all of the ones in group one form plus one ions, so you will get one hydroxide. If you have a group two base, when this dissolves, it's forming calcium that's a plus two, which means there were two hydroxides attached to it. So you'll get two hydroxides. And as an example, we simply have, uh, oh, whoops, that's not an example of this. This is an example of another way you can form hyd hydroxides. If you have an oxide, so see, it doesn't have any hydrogen right now. Doesn't matter. You're dissolving it in water. Whoa, it just plain reacts so that the calcium will end up as the plus two ion and these things get moved around. We have enough, we have two oxygens, we have two hydrogens, so we end up with two hydroxide ions. So you should be looking for things in an ionic oxide, you can make hydroxides. You will notice, however, that this now says it's an equilibrium. So this might not be terribly soluble. Eventually, we'll talk about solubility as well. So the weak bases will produce hydroxide ions, but they're going to get to equilibrium before all of the base is consumed. They will form an equilibrium. They won't go to completion. How does it happen? Here's an example with, with ammonia. So here's an ammonia molecule. And oh, look, you know, this had lone pairs. This hydrogen's like, oh, you've got a lone pair over there? Well, you know, hydrogen bonding, right? Which can ultimately end up with the hydrogen switching to being attached to the nitrogen and leave a hydroxide group behind. And so that is what is going on. It does form an equilibrium. And using our rules about, hey, we, we ignore things that are completely liquid. We can say K sub B for base is equal to the concentrations of the products over the concentration of the only one we get to keep in this equilibrium constant because we ignore the, the water itself and we will have a KB value for this equation. So see, we bring all that equilibrium stuff forward with us to continue working with acids and bases in particular. Amines, now you'll notice when I pulled this table over, I found out it said K sub A, which is wrong. It's supposed to be K sub B values, so I just put this over it I don't think that what I uploaded for you has that in it yet. I will have to fix that. But these amines are organic compounds with functional groups that resemble ammonia. So NH3 is the simple ammonia. You could replace one of those hydrogens with a methyl group. So the CH3 is in place of one of these hydrogens or even a dimethyl. So two methyl groups replacing two of the hydrogens. You could attach an ethyl group instead of a methyl group. So you see there's more of a stem here. It's a very short stem since there's only two carbons in it. Or you could even put something like this phenylamine together where you have a ring. So these organic compounds have nitrogen that are that's bonded to carbon once you get away from this one. So nitrogen bonded to carbon in these areas. And the base strength, why are they basic? Because once this happens, it will increase the electron density that is around the nitrogen. 
because the nitrogen is more electronegative than the carbons that are attaching to it. So we will see that we can increase the strength of the base by doing this. This, on the other hand, is the other way around. It's very weak. See that 10 to the minus 10? That's very weak. So if you look at this, its group, very stable and loves electrons. So boom, those electrons are being pulled away from the nitrogen instead, making this a very weak base compared to these others, which are minus fives and minus fours. Conjugate pairs. Now we'll, we'll show you some more of this because right now we're just doing definitions and it's terribly boring. I'm sorry for the wall of text. Okay, so conjugate pairs. A conjugate acid-base pair. So you're talking Bronsted-Lowry acids, so you're thinking about uh, protons being accepted or donated. So a Bronsted-Lowry acid and base pair differ only by that proton, that H plus ion, whether it's on it or not. So the conjugate base is the base that is formed when that acid has donated the proton so it no longer has it. The conjugate acid is an acid formed if a Bronsted-Lowry base has accepted an H plus. So when we write these, we will always write an acid and a base on the left side of the equation. And then on the right side, there will be a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. 